on the planet lived in one place. They all lived in one place, this place called China. And they all spoke in one language. <laughs> this is really exactly what people are looking for nowadays. People just want to uh, join the whole earth right now. And uh, they want to make it uh, like one community, like people are living in one place. And uh, right now, everybody wants to speak, you know, they, we don't want to have a language barrier. We want to be able to speak to people in Spain and speak to people in, uh, in Africa and speak to people in Russia, in U.S. without any language barrier. That's exactly what uh, is happening right now. But this one was possible back in the days when people lived in one place called China. It was just uh, between um, at the middle of Turkey, Syria, uh, Iraq, Kuwait, Iran, you know, around there. This is where everybody lived there. But this was not the plan of God. God did not plan people to stay in one place. And uh, he told them that uh, they should spread out. But man, like you know man, he didn't want that. Now le let me show you something here. Genesis 11 1 says, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech, okay? Everybody was speaking one language and once uh, they, 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 they spoke in one language, they listened to each other. So they could say, no, let's stay at this place. Let's do this and that. But uh, that was not the plan of God. The plan of God was this, uh, Genesis 9 7. This was the plan of God, Genesis 9, uh, 9 verse 7. Let me show you the plan of God, what God intended. He, he wanted, he said in Genesis 9, 7, And you, be ye fruitful, and multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth, and multiply therein. He wanted people to multiply, and be fruitful, and of course to fill the earth. He wanted them to fill the earth. Let me show you where he's telling them that they should fill the earth. Genesis 1, uh, 28. He's telling them to dominate. How can you dominate the whole earth if you're in one place? And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be ye fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. He was not to replenish China. They were not to replenish only this place. It was replenish the whole earth everywhere and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So it was to dominate the whole earth. But man did not want that. He just wanted, you know, let's stay together at one place. Uh, we don't want to leave our brothers and sisters. We just want to be in one place. And uh, this was not the plan of God, okay? They also wanted something else. Apart from just dominating the earth, they also wanted to make a name for themselves. Instead of giving God the glory, they wanted to glory in themselves. Are you seeing this one? Let, let me show you. In Genesis uh, 11 and verse 4, these people wanted to make a name for themselves. You see why it's important to praise God instead of praising yourself? And they said, go. Go to, let us build up a city. Let us build a city and a tower. Whose top may reach unto heaven? They want to reach heaven. You see, they want to reach where God is. They want to do what human beings are doing right now. They want to go to the moon, to the stars, to the mass, to where. And they, they, they want to go where God has not appointed us. God has appointed us at uh, the earth. But man want to go further and further to be like God. Let us make a name. Lest we be scattered abroad and upon the face of the whole earth. They don't want to be scattered the way God wanted them to do. They don't want to go everywhere and fill the earth. They just want to make a name upwards. It's like they wanted to beat God in his own game. And they make a name for themselves. Are you seeing the way the world right now, everybody wants to leave a legacy? Our presidents, they want to leave a legacy. They want to make a name for themselves. They want to create something. They say Come on, let us create something. Let us make a name for ourselves. Let us be wise. Let us be known. Let, let it be seen in the books that I am so and so who discovered this and this and this. People want to have a name for themselves. They want to leave legacies of doing great things. This is what even happened with Hitler. He wanted to make a name for himself. And that's why all those people were killed. It's, it's, it's not good to make... To, to live and want to make a name for yourself. Let God be seen in you. Everything that you do, give God the glory. Give God the glory. Okay? 
But the Bible tells us, who can contest with God? Who can contend with God? Can you really fight God and say, no, God, I'll not do your will. I'll do something else. Remember Jonah? He was sent by God to go to Nineveh. And he said, no, I will go to another place. What happened? He had to be swallowed by a fish and taken back to where God wanted him to go. You cannot contend with God. Let's see what happened. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men had built. You know, God says, let me, let me go and check what these guys are building. Let me go and see. Does it really make sense? Let me see. And the Lord said, behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Let us go down. Let us go down. This also proving Trinity. Let us. God is three. God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go and there confound their language that they may not understand one another. So the Lord scattered them abroad from whence. Uh, God scattered them abroad from when, thence upon the face of the whole earth and they left off to build the city. So God has scattered all these people. He scattered them. They were building the city, but now they could not hear one another. You speak to somebody, he's speaking Swahili, hey, you say, okay, let's go to Africa. And another one, hey, he's speaking um, uh, French, let's go to France. Hey, another one, hey, hey, let's go to Spanish. Hey, the, everybody was not hearing each other. You're just looking for whoever is speaking your language. And you you know, you just go to, to a certain corner and uh, you start spreading over. You know, God is very powerful. If he did spread all these people... Just by confusing their languages. And this is a place where, therefore, is the name of it called Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. So God literally cast that place and said, no, it will not happen. It will not happen. Let these people go out. And he scattered every person. He scattered all of them. Now, do you know something else that God, after scattering these people, after people have already started filling the earth and the whole world is really full and people have taken, you know, they are living in different places of the earth. Now God derived another plan. He said, okay, let me be, bring people back again together. Let me, let me give them one language once again that they can hear one another. And then now I want to break the barrier so that now, we can get into the end times whereby the gospel must be preached to the whole earth. You see how God is powerful? He can scatter and discatter. He can scatter and unscatter. Is that, is that the word? Now, in the day of Pentecost, God sends the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit, in short, comes down. And we see something happening. Genesis, uh, I mean, Acts 2 from verse 1. Let me show you what really happened. This is the day of Pentecost, okay? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, in one place. People, you know, the, 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 the disciples were in one place together with the other people. They were about 120. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them cloven tongues as an as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Now the language barrier has been broken. They are now starting to speak with other tongues. This is the day of Pentecost. There were cloven tongues here, and they started speaking in other languages. Now let's see what happened. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven. There were some guys who were living there in Jerusalem from every nation. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man had them speak in his own language. You see, the language barrier has been brought together again. It was broken at Babel. Now, it is being brought back again. It is being brought back again. Are you seeing this one? 
And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men of every nation under heaven. Now this was noise abroad. The multitude came together and were confounded because that every man had them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are they all not these which speak Galileans? Now here, now here we, every man in his own lang tongue, in our own tongue, wherein we are born. Why are we hearing them speaking in our own languages? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia and in Judea, Capes Cappadocia, in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Phrygia. Famphilia in Egypt and the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and Polycites, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak of in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Wow. Wow. The Holy Spirit brings people back again together. And now they are speaking in one language. Do you see how God is powerful? He brought back again the languages in one day. People will speaking. And you remember even what the Bible says. I will pour out my spirit on all people in the last days. That spirit will join every person together. The language barrier will be broken. You can now speak to different people and you can hear one another through translations and things like that. It was not possible back then. Now... Because of the last days, the Spirit of God has been poured on all people. And the Bible tells us something in these last days. Something that you need to understand here in Galatians 3, verse 28. See this. Galatians 3, 28. There is neither Jew or Greek. There is neither bond or free. There is neither male or female. For all are one in Christ Jesus. Right now, there is no these barriers. The Spirit of God has been poured to all people. Not Jews, not Greeks only, not the male, not the female. Everyone. This proving really that God is a powerful God. And if you're still there, and you're looking and asking yourself, have I done the right thing? Am I in this big picture of the Holy Spirit? Do I have the Holy Spirit? The only way you can have the Holy Spirit is if you believe the gospel. Believe the gospel and you will have the Holy Spirit. You will have the Holy Spirit. The only way you can get the Holy Spirit, who will break all this barrier and will make you great? It's through believing the gospel. In whom you trusted after that you heard the word of truth. Ephesians 1.13. The gospel of your salvation. In whom you also after that you believe. You are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The only way you can be sealed and get the Holy Spirit is when you are saved. And what is the work of the Holy Spirit? Which is the earnest, the earnest assurance of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. And to the praise of his glory. Are you saved brothers and sisters? If you're not saved, the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about believing how that Christ died for our sins, he was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures. When you believe that the death of Jesus was not in vain, it was the death for you so that you can be saved by his blood for you to be forgiven, then there's nothing which will break that. You will be saved. We are in the last days. This one proves that we are now in the last days. The Spirit of God has been poured on all people. The language barrier has been, been broken again. And people have been brought back again together. Believe the gospel.